Hey, real quick before we get into it, all of this information comes from my online checkride course. I have been in your shoes, studying for my checkride and not knowing exactly what to study or what I needed to know. And you don't want to be in the position where you fail your checkride because you didn't know the right information. And as I was going through flight school, I wish I had this course. It is literally everything you need to know to pass your checkride. It is literally everything you need to know to pass your checkride. And I dropped the price of the course super low so that it's accessible to everyone. Whether you're going for your private, your commercial, or your flight instructor, take this course. And if you're going for your CFI, take the course below and feel free to use the information in it for your lessons. Like I said, this is just the course I wish I had. The link is in the description below, and let's talk about it. The lift equation. This scares a lot of people. It shouldn't. It's not that bad. And with an understanding of it... Come on, buddy. With an understanding of it, you can aerodynamics becomes so much easier, and it's actually quite cool. Okay, what is the lift equation? Lift equals the coefficient of lift times one half times rho times velocity no nope. rho times surface area times velocity squared another way you will see this written they mean the same thing but we're going to stick with this top one but lift equals the coefficient of lift times rho times surface area times the velocity squared divided by two so up in the top equation, we have this one half. What does that mean? We take the entire equation and we divide it in half. Okay, the second, the one on the bottom, it means the same thing. We take these variables, these variables, and divide it in half, divide it by two. So I was taught the top equation, and that's what makes sense for me, and we are going to stick to that. But you may see them written like that, but they mean the same thing. So the coefficient of lift, what is this? Coefficient of lift, angle of attack. We'll get to that, but we're just breaking it down. The one half, the one half, we call this a constant. And this constant is just what we need to make the equation work. It's just part of the equation. Next, we have rho. And rho is Greek for air density. Air density. S is surface area. Surface area. And V2 is velocity squared. Velocity squared. We're going to come back to velocity squared. Uh, that is by far the most important variable. But we have this as our prime lift equation. The coefficient of lift, and I can write that, it's called the coefficient, efficient, Spelt that wrong. Coefficient of lift. So let's start with the easiest one, surface area. What does this mean? The size of the airfoil is going to produce more lift. The larger the airfoil you have, the more lift you're going to produce. So surface area. Uh, bigger equals more lift. And that's all you need to know about for surface area. Pretty easy. Next is air density. Rho. Rho equals air density. So what is rho? Rho or air density has two parts. One, we have temperature, temperature, and pressure. You also have humidity, and we'll mention that. Pressure, and then you have humidity. Okay, so temperature. Let's take a parcel of air, so just a plot of air, and this one is going to be at, in aviation we use Celsius, so let's use like something super warm, like 50 degrees Celsius, super hot. 50 degrees Celsius, I don't know, maybe that's like 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't exactly know, but super hot. And then we're going to take a parcel of air at... Uh, blue. Zero degrees Celsius, which I know is freezing. Zero degrees Celsius, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And a parcel of air, 
Well, think about yourself. When it's hot out, what do you want to do? You want to run around and spread out from people because they're hot. If you're laying in bed with someone else, they're really warm, so you don't want to be close to them. So everything is super far out, spread out, because they don't want to be close to each other. Okay, if we take a parcel of air here now at zero degrees Celsius, what do you do when it's cold out? You want to cuddle up, you want to get close to people, um, you want to use that warmth. So everything gets really tightly packed in for that zero degrees Celsius. So if we're thinking about our blade, our blade likes to fly through air. Well, where do we have the most dense air, super densely packed air molecules in cold air? What does this mean for lift production? Uh, when it's colder out, we're going to have better lift production because we are producing more lift because there's more air molecules. So that's temperature. Next, we have pressure. Let's bring up uh, orange is cool. So we've got, now we're talking about pressure. Uh, pressure is the second part. So let's take a parcel of air at standard pressure. 2992 inches of mercury hg versus a parcel of air at uh let's go low pressure 2950 super low pressure hg versus a parcel of air at super high pressure 30.20 inches of mercury okay so as standard pressure uh let's bring up a color here Standard pressure, we have, let's just call that the average amount of air molecules. At low pressure, less. At high pressure, more. Where is our blade going to want to fly? In the higher pressure. So, so far, we get better flying conditions at low temperatures and high pressure. The last one's humidity, and I don't, from my research, I think it's, probably the least important one but relevant to mention okay so if we take a parcel of air at i don't know let's call it two percent humidity two percent and we take a parcel of air here at 90 percent humidity and i mean you know this in the summer when it's really humid it just doesn't feel good and the air is really thin okay so here at zero percent humidity we have lots of air molecules and that's all fine and well. And then we've got like a little bit of water. So like 2% water. Okay. At 90% humidity, there's just tons of water in the air. It's just holding a lot of water. Well, where does the air particles go in between that water? And there's just less room for air particles. So we get better conditions. We get we produce more lift when there's more air versus more water. So when it comes to rho, what are the best conditions for lift? Well, low temperature is going to be great. Low temp. Pressure, higher pressure because we have more air molecules. And then humidity, low humidity. So th those are the three factors that make up rho. So we've talked about surface area, the larger the surface area, the more lift you're producing, then rho is air density. Um, the more dense the air, the better. So cold, high pressure, low humidity, great. So flying in the winter is prime. Okay, moving on. We've talked about surface area. We've talked about rho. Um, the next factor we're gonna talk about is the coefficient of lift. Really interesting, I love talking about the coefficient of lift. Coefficient of lift or this is basically our angle of attack and angle of attack equals lift okay so let's talk about the helicopter in a hover so we are hovering versus uh let's do like 70 knots so we're just flying along we tip the disc forward and we're kind of flying along we have that horizontal stabilizer in the back, which is producing lift downwards. Okay, so at a hover, what does our airflow pattern look like? Well, it is directly vertical. So we are sucking air in and pushing it down, and the airflow looks like this. Sucking air in, pushing it down, 
sucking air in, pushing it down, sucking air in, pushing it down. What is this airflow called? This is called induced flow. Induced flow. Induced flow is the downward movement of air through the rotor system and induced flow negatively, negatively impacts lift. Induced flow is bad. Let's put that in red. Bad. We don't like induced flow. And it makes us really inefficient. Let's talk about why. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's talk about airflow in... Uh, we'll use yellow. Induced flow or airflow when we're flying along at 70 knots. Airflow is entirely horizontal. So the airflow is just moving into our rotor system kind of like this. Uh, sweet. Let's look at both of these blades at the same pitch setting. So, and this is our cord line. Cord line. And we're going to say that this blade also has the same pitch. Okay, so we are comparing the airflow in a hover versus forward flight. And this one is going to be hover, and this one is going to be forward flight. Well, the first wind flow pattern that we have affecting these blades is what's called rotational relative wind. Um, and as our blade moves through the air, airflow comes and hits it at this direction and it is flow due to rotation. So we can say we have rotational relative wind. Uh, let's put this. So we've got rotational, rotational relative wind. And we can call this flow due to rotation. Flow due to rotation. And both of these, while we're in a hover and while we're in forward flight, our blade is spinning around. Our blade is spinning around and airflow is hitting it at the horizontal direction. So airflow comes like this. And airflow comes like this. Both of them have it. This is called rotational relative wind and rotational relative wind. Okay, both of them have it. On in the hover, what airflow pattern do we have that we just talked about that's bad? We have induced flow. How does induced flow move? It moves down vertically through the rotor system. We can see that. So induced flow is gonna come in like this, and this is induced flow. That's negative, we'll talk about it. Okay. During forward flight, we don't have that induced flow. Maybe there's a little bit. There's always going to be a little bit. But we can just mention that over here. And we're just going to call this induced flow. Induced flow. Just that small area of induced flow. Really insignificant. Okay, when you add two things together, what do you get? You get what is called a result. So we have what is called resultant. Resultant. Result tant relative wind and it is the result of induced flow plus rotational relative wind induced flow and rotational relative wind added together okay so let's start with our hover if we take our rotational relative wind and our induced flow and add them together this is our resultant relative wind Okay, so we added those two forces. Looking at during our forward flight, we have rotational relative wind and we have induced flow. And we add those together. And this is our resultant relative wind. Okay. Here we go. If we look at the difference, and now we're going to look at angle of attack. Angle of attack. And what did we say angle of attack is? Angle of attack, it's also the coefficient of lift, but angle of attack equals lift. So this is where we are actually getting a lot of our lift from, or the biggest factor of lift. Angle of attack is the difference between
the chord line and resultant relative wind. So where is our angle of attack here? Difference between our chord line and our resultant relative wind. This is our angle of attack. An angle of attack equals lift. Where's our angle of attack over here in forward flight? Well, here's our chord line. Here's our resultant relative wind angle of attack. We are producing significantly more lift in hover or in forward flight than we are in a hover. What is it? How, what's that practical application? And you've seen this as you fly along. During a hover, maybe you're pulling 22 or 23 inches of manifold pressure. The engine is working really hard just to stay in that hover because it's so inefficient. We have such a small angle of attack. We're not producing that. We're not producing good lift over there on uh, forward flight. If we're cruising along at 70, 80 knots, maybe we're pulling 19 inches, 18 inches, 19 inches of manifold pressure. So the engine doesn't have to work that hard because we're producing so much lift because we have gotten rid of that induced flow. Does that make sense? We are just producing a ton of lift. Leave questions if that part doesn't make sense. So we talk about this lift equation. We have lift equals the coefficient of lift angle of attack. Super important. What makes our angle of attack bigger? Well, when we get forward flight and we get rid of induced flow. Okay, we've got one half the constant. We've got rho, which is air density. Surface area, the bigger the blade, the more lift we're going to produce. What part have we not talked about? Velocity squared. And what can you see? It is the only variable in this equation that is squared. That means whatever it is, you times it by itself. So it is the most important factor. Let's talk about velocity squared. What's the best example, the best way to talk about velocity squared? Through the symmetry of lift.